In this video, you will learn how to import your robot from a URDF file into ICXM and convert it into the UST file format. I will walk you through a hands-on example using the SO ARM100 robot arm, which is part of my community project series on robotic simulation and reinforcement learning. I already presented a live version of this, which you can find on the NVIDIA Omniverse livestream. Yeah, this is me, and I was very excited. Feel free to check it out, as many questions have been answered from the community and insights were given from the awesome NVIDIA engineers. However, this tutorial here is a more condensed and focused version, where I will also show important snippets later from the live stream. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, you don't really have to know much about ISXM at this point, but for those who are new here, ISXM is the robotic simulation platform built on top of the NVIDIA Omniverse ecosystem, and it is used for a variety of applications such as synthetic data generation, ROS integration, and reinforcement learning and URDF, or the Unified Robot Description Format, that is used to describe robot models in ROS or in simulation general. I could do a whole tutorial on this, but in fact, the channel Articulated Robots has made a really good introduction to URDF, which you can check out here. You can also find a very good introduction into ISXM, so I again highly recommend this channel. I will link it down in the description. And the last part is the USD file format, which also answers the question why we even need an URDF importer in ISXM. To summarize, USD is a scene graph file format that defines everything in your simulation. The entire simulation is a USD file, and so are all its subcomponents, including materials, slides, and objects. So when we import a robot from a URDF file, it becomes a USD asset which enables us to manipulate it in ISXM, connect it to ROS, or train it using reinforcement learning in ISAC Lab. Okay, so let's start with the hands-on example using the SO-100. First of all, you can check out the docs here, as well as a tutorial for the front arm. You can find the URDF for the SO-100 here on this GitHub. You can find the URDF under URDF. We are going to use the 5 degree of freedom arm and the updated 8J folder. And under URDF, you can see the URDF file. However, there are some discrepancies in the naming of the joints especially the moving jaw, which is leading to some errors. I will show how to fix these. So I've taken the URDF folder into my existing SO100 repo. In here under URDF, you can see the URDF file inside here. And then here you have to add an underscore to all the moving jaw names. So you will have to look for moving jaw and add an underscore everywhere. This also counts for the mesh moving jaw, where you have to add an underscore. But you don't have to deal with these problems, as you can just go on my GitHub and find the already working URDF file here. Now, after opening ISXM, you can import the URDF by clicking on File, Import, and then selecting the URDF from the folder. After selecting the URDF file, the URDF importer extension will automatically open on the right. I will make this a bit bigger. We want to select these following settings, which I will now explain in more detail. Okay, so first we can choose which model we want to take. It doesn't really matter which one we take for now. But choosing Create and Stage gives us more options, as we would otherwise just reference other files. We want to select the robot as the default print, as it will make it easier for later ROS and reinforcement learning workflows. And also clear stage on import if we already have something else inside here. Next, we can choose our type of link. In our case, we want to choose static base as we use a robot arm. Otherwise, for a wheeled robot, we would choose movable base. The static base will also automatically put our base link as a root joint. We want to keep the default density to zero, as we already have a mass and it will override the density. If we don't have a mass provided in the URDF, we can use the default density as backup, where 0.0, .0 would lead to an automatic computation. Next up, we have the joint and drives, where we first can choose to ignore mimic. In our case, we can ignore the mimic because we don't have anything that is identical. One example would be for the Franca arm, which has two grippers which are identical and have a mimic joint. Before we continue with the joint configuration and the drive type, I want to cover the colliders first, because this part will be a bit longer. So for colliders, we can choose collision from visuals. I do not want to take this option because the URDF has already provided a very good estimate for the colliders. I set the collider type to convex hole because convex decomposition is very computational expensive. You can also choose the colliders later on. We want to allow self-collision and disregard the replace cylinders with capsules. Okay, now let us continue with the joint configuration and the drive type. For this, I want to first show you a clip from Michael Gussard from the live stream, explaining how the joint physics are modeled. In order to, to keep the sim performant, <clears throat> we simulate all the joints and motors uh, as, as dumb as possible. <laughs> Right. So there isn't like an electromagnetic sim that simulates stators and stuff. What we have is we have a simple spring system and that spring has a spring coefficient. Um, and then there's a damping factor that determines how the spring responds to an applied uh, force. So if you're talking about a rotational uh, force, you're talking about like an applied torque. 
and the damping term on that torque. So the stiffness and the damping coefficients or factors, because um, I'm not privy to the actual intimate details of how the simulation is done, but it's modeled off of this spring. I will also show another clip explaining the stiffness and damping parameters in order to understand these settings here. And so the stiffness determines how quickly the joint goes to the target that you're setting it. So if you have a drive position or a, or a drive force, the stiffness tells you how quickly that's going to be applied. And then the dampening tells you how susceptible you want it to be to oscillation. Like how rigid do you want it to, you want it to go to that location and then stop like hard, or do you want it to like be uh, a more graceful uh, like easing? Um, and, and those are the parameters that determine that. So after having understood how these concepts work, I want to go over the difference in the settings. You can choose to put natural frequency or stiffness. Choosing stiffness allows you to manually set values for these parameters. However, first we have to choose the drive type between force and acceleration. In our case, we choose force drive because it's closer to the real world physics. It simulates a spring damper system, which is physically more accurate compared to the acceleration drive, which is idealized and simplifies the control. Now for each joint, you can set the target. So our target will be the position in radians for the revolute joints that we have. And for prismatic joints, it would be distance. Now I also want to take the time to talk about the stiffness and damping values if you don't know how to choose these. So instead of setting them manually when choosing stiffness, we go to natural frequency. This will then calculate the stiffness and damping parameters based on the frequency and damping ratios that we will see in a moment. But first I want to show how it's calculated under the hood. So first the importer computes the joint inertia from the URDF by calculating the accumulated inertias. Then it calculates the stiffness using a spring mass damper physics model. And finally it computes the appropriate damping for stable joint control. So this is a snippet from the documentation. This is showing the basic calculations for the stiffness and the damping. So F is the natural frequency that we can put, and R is the damping ratio, and M is the total equivalent inertia. And as you probably know, the damping ratio is critically damped at 1. Below 1 it is underdamped, and above it will be overdamped. And because the URDF importer extension is open sourced, I took, I took the time to go over the code and just show some snippets. So the stiffness calculation is done like above, just like the damping as well. But coming now to the joint inertia calculation, so for each joint, it traverses the joint tree in both directions, meaning for the parent tree and the child tree, and then it applies the parallel axis theorem. And finally, it combines the inertias using the equivalent inertia formula. And one thing I wanted to quickly mention is that it expects a angular frequency in radians per second and not in hertz. So we would have to convert these first. And also in ISXM, we have a different GUI display, which is showing the values in degrees and not in radians. So we would have to multiply the values by 57.3 if we want to verify the calculation ourselves. So choosing proper stiffness and damping values is important because we don't want to have unresponsive joints or numerical instability, and we want to try to make it look as natural as possible. So in order to determine the good values for real robot, you can check out the documentation for tuning joint drive gains. And here you can find a little guide that is telling you how to start finding the good values. However, usually you can look at the specifications if available you can try to use identification techniques like the frequency response analysis, or also apply step inputs and measure the oscillation yourself. Usually you would still have to iteratively experiment a lot. As I wasn't able to find any specifications online, I made a little research, but honestly, these settings didn't really work well. So I experimented a bit and I had these settings here. So 10 Hertz for the natural frequency and 0 0.7 for the damping ratio. We are able to set these settings here. I will choose the same frequency and damping ratio for all the joints. While holding shift, you are able to click all the joints at once and set your frequency and damping ratio here. In our case, it will be 10 and 0 0.7. Now, before inputting the robot and also showing some final steps to make sure everything is set up for Ross and Isaac Lab, I wanted to highlight that my chosen parameters won't have to be perfect. And they don't have to, at least in reinforcement learning tests, especially for the sim to real transfer. This is thanks to the domain randomization that we can apply. And here will be a last clip from our hero, Michael, explaining this. You do sim to real transfer. There's a whole type of domain randomization that specifically focuses on the randomization of the physical parameters of the simulation so that the policy becomes robust enough to be able to handle the real world with parameters that are 
unknown, but hopefully within the bounds and range of, of the simulation randomization that we did. Here's also a little figure showcasing this. So this is our simulation and this is the reality. And when we just randomize enough, at one point we will also get in the realm of reality. And the randomization parameters can include stuff like mass, damping, stiffness, or friction. This concept is also referred to closing the sim to real gap. Okay, coming back to the simulation, after pressing import, we successfully imported the robot into the ISXM scene. By pressing F, we can go to the robot. Selecting Ray Studio will allow us to visually inspect the robot here. On the right, you see the stage. So this is our robot. And as we can see from the dropdown, we can inspect all the looks. So these are the materials, all the joints. So all the revolute joints, the root joint, which is our base, and then all the meshes along with their collisions. We usually have some common but important steps to do after the import. The first would be to go to Tools, Physics, and activating the Physics Inspector. You can choose the top of the robot here in the prim, and then click on Update. This will give you this UI. And in here, you can mess around with the settings and move the robot. This will allow you to verify the settings that you have chosen previously. So I'm very happy with these settings because I feel like these are reflecting the real robot very well. Inside the inspector, you can also set the joint limits if you want. And on the dropdown, also chose stiffness and damping to see the parameters. This will show very low parameters because our mass and inertia are very low for this robot. So usually you would have to go to the joints and go through each joint itself or click the filter. For example, for the rotation under properties, you can scroll down. And here see the Angular drive with the force type that we chose, and the damping and stiffness factors are shown here. You can of course change the settings as much as you want, for example, like this here. And then inside the physics inspector, you can also play with these and see the difference. So it's way snappier like this. The joint limits can also be set in here. I think talking about other settings should be done in another video if you guys want to see that. But there's one more very important thing that I need to tackle. So if we filter for the articulation boot, we see that it's set for a joint. But in ISXM, this will be a problem as we don't want to set it to a joint. Instead, we want to set it to the base XPRIM. So for the root joint, we delete the articulation root. And on base, we right click, add physics, and then articulation boot. This will be important for BOSS and ISIC lab configurations. So the very last step would be to just save the file. So you can either press Control S or go to File, Save As, select the folder that you want to save it to. I already have one here that is configured and then just save it. And now it is a USD file that you can use for ROS and ISAC Lab within ISAC-SIM. And as always, you can find the tutorial on my platform, which I will link below. I wanted to give a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. So thank you, Edmar, Michael, Berg, Five Siegen or ODD, Stefan, Richie, and Jackson. Thanks to you, I was able to buy and start the SOR100 tutorial project. I recently also created two more tiers with benefits. So if you also want to help me create more videos for everyone, then feel free to check out my Patreon, which I will link down below. If you have found this video helpful, consider subscribing and also liking. It really helps a lot.